Today, we're gonna go through the Bethlehem of Galilee. That's right, not Bethlehem in Judea, not Bethlehem in Ephrata or Judah, not next to Jerusalem, but right here, eight miles from Nazareth, in Jezreel Valley, Bethlehem of Galilee. The story goes all the way back to Joshua 18, 19, where Joshua comes to the children of Israel. There are still seven tribes. They have not gotten their allotment. And it tells them, how long will you neglect to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given to you? So he sends three men from each tribe to make a survey. And they come back and they throw lots. The tribe of Zebulun receives in his lot 12 cities. And one of them, Bethlehem of Galilee. What's interesting is this Bethlehem of Galilee is located in the Jezreel Valley, and it's not the same as the Bethlehem of Judah. Archaeological findings suggest that during the early Roman times, this very city was pretty prosperous. Now, during the Ottoman Empire, this city had only 20 families and two bachelors, and we know this according to the tax documents that they found from Ottoman Empire. Now fast forward, the German Templars that came to Israel, some of them have settled right here. And they've built Templar structures, which can be seen here today. 17th April 1948, the Jewish paramilitary force, Haganah, recaptured the city and Jews resettled it, making it a Moshav. Last year, the Israeli Bureau of Statistics have made a survey of how many people live here. Guess what? 777. So let's think about it for a moment. When Zebulun came here with his tribe, what did they use for weapons? Well, look at that. We've got an archery park. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go shoot some bows. In this very area, Zablin used to hunt for food. And Ibzan, the Israeli judge who had 30 sons and 30 daughters, that's where he hunted for food. <gasps> ah, beast! Now we can make kosher bacon out of it. We just spoke to one of the locals and he said that when the Israeli settlers came here, um, that they have uh, put all the ruins under cement, buried them, built new houses over the old ruins. So everything is under the ground. He said there's a whole settlement, a whole uh, village under the ground. There's a law in Israel that if you find ruins, you have to report it. But a lot of times people want to build, they want to move on. They don't want to report it. So unfortunately, a lot of those ruins found under the ground, whether in Nazareth, whether here in Bethlehem, Galilee, whether in Jerusalem, any place in Israel, every inch of it, there is history. And we don't have all of it. I'm a little dizzy. Let's see how fast we can do. <laughs> 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 Feel like a kid yet? Oh, stop! Oh. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh. 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 All right, all right. Oh. Right there behind the tree? Yeah. Right. So this is the only thing in the area. We have one hour to wait for the bus. We're just gonna have to go there. Yeah, you no longer need to talk to a person. It's like almost in a science fiction movie. Why interact with a person? You can talk to a machine. You know, very soon you'll get like a, a right hand arm identification. There you go. And then maybe like a forehead. Do you want to order? I'd rather starve than eat here. Starve. Successful marketers often have their own website.
websites. And once strict to a website, the internet offers customers detailed content and a highly interactive experience. Amazon is an ideal example. They offer product illustrations, product reviews, 